so yeah it startled me when I shot it <laughs> and the camera turned off I don't know if it's because of the time or not but uh, in any case loading it is you can't just really quickly press it in there um, you have to line up this notch it won't go in except one position and then you have to press really hard to compress the spring you can see maybe the spring is very severely compressed and then it shoots very rapidly and then you have to line up the next load uh, press in So it has some spare darts. For some reason it just you have to press it in the right way. So you can shoot it one at a time like that. Like that. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get it nice and close. But like I said, it can shoot them all very, very quickly. And uh, it makes a lot of noise. <clears throat> In terms of build, it was pretty straightforward. Um, oh, just there's another page of parts. Uh, In terms of new parts, uh, obviously these spring-loaded dart shooters and the darts themselves are, are brand new parts um, I think most everything else is a part that's been around other than the electronics uh, this 2x4 2x2 45 degree bent beam uh, was in one of the sets from last year um, the slopes and the curved parts were in sets from last year as well, but it's nice to have them in quantity in this set. This 2x2 uh, two two 45 degree bent beam might be new. I don't know for sure if that's been in other sets or not. And then they also have this uh, this little round one by circle. I don't know what you'd call it really, but it's used on the trigger. It's this piece right here. So, decorative, I guess, mostly. I don't know what its purpose would be for construction at all. It's decorative on the trigger, at least here. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, the size of the manual makes it hard for me, at least, to see and see the holes. You, you can't maybe tell, but especially with the color the holes are just a tiny bit darker but they do have arrows that are pretty good they show that's three and a half that's five and a half with this one being number one so you can count down and over but the larger size manual I find to be easier to see um, Again, this axle, they don't have a one-to-one -one measurement on it. But overall, it's pretty good. They do use these icons quite a bit to make sure. So in this case, I uh, don't know if you can see, but one of these connectors is facing, uh, the flat side is on the bottom, facing with the curved side upward. And then the other one is the opposite of that with the flat side facing up and the curved portion of the, the back side of the connectors down, as you can kind of see there. So I'm trying to give uh, good guidance to make that clear. They don't do it in every case, because I guess in some cases it's more obvious that they're aligned a certain way, oriented a certain way. Um, there weren't really any tricky parts to the build, but 
definitely can be hard to see in certain cases. One of the things that, um, I don't know if I made a mistake or, or what, but at near, the, well basically at the very end, There were a couple of things here that were slightly tricky, but at the very end, you put this uh, wheel onto the end of the axle, and it shows that you should use four of these one by one pins. I was totally out of the one by one pins, um, but I had four little Standoffs. I have four of these uh, 0.5x standoffs. So that's what I put in here. And interestingly, the pictures kind of make it look, at least based on the amount of axle sticking out, I don't know, it's hard to tell. But uh, in my case, I didn't have four pins available, but I had four of these. 0.5x standoff, so I use those instead. Um, doesn't really make any difference construction wise. The other thing I wanted to point out <clears throat> this bit was a little tricky. Um, I don't know if, there, if there's any better way to, uh, to show how to build it, but basically, you have to do all of these things four times and then you have to put them together. So you do four, these two pages describe building all the way to this step four times. And then you have to put them together to form a circle, right? Like you see here. And unfortunately, um, at some point along the way, I slightly s screwed it up where all of these should be lined up. You can you can see that uh, they're all in an even lineup, but somehow I got it so that some were shifted backwards, some were shifted forward. So it was like half of them were too far back. And when when I was in that state, the uh, the connection wouldn't line up for the next piece around it around the circle. So I ended up having to redo some of them. I'm not exactly sure what I did wrong, you know, but uh, for sure at this point I was I had some of them out of alignment. And they were just not right. So it was probably one of these steps in here that I did wrong. I'm not 100% sure what, but it was easy enough to correct. I basically just had to take one of these out and slide it forward or backward to get it into the right alignment. At first I thought, well, maybe that's how it's supposed to be, but uh, from the box it was pretty clear that they were supposed to all line up, and so I had to fix that. But aside from that, I'd say this is probably the most complicated part of it, is putting those four things together and then making the two halves here and then putting those two halves together. Um, but it was not horribly difficult. Actually, I think I'd see where I, where I made a mistake. I think maybe, no, yeah, I made a mistake right here. Yeah, these are all supposed to be the 0.5x standoffs, and you can see I messed that up. So, uh, yeah, there's supposed to be a gap there. I'll have to take that apart and fix it. It works but it's the back of this is actually a little closer to there than it's supposed to be um, so I will fix that with it a little bit further forward I don't think it would make really any difference in terms of firing but there'd be just a little bit more of a gap between this black connector piece and the back of these spring-loaded be about a quarter of an inch further that way so anyway so it's nice 
playability, you know, you can shoot darts at things. Um, you can learn about electronics and polarity switching and motors and gear ratios. Um, about kinetic energy and potential energy. Uh, and you can shoot darts. It makes a lot of noise. It shoots the darts really fast. I think kids will have fun playing with it. Uh, parents might get annoyed. <laughs> and the darts could get lost fairly easily. They do have, uh, I think, four extra darts. Mine are all shot around the room at this point, so I'll have to go collect them. But uh, um, I like it. I would recommend it. It's, uh, I think it's $29.99. You can get it at Target. You can order it from hexbug.com. Um, and I think that's all I have to say about it. Thank you.